Right, what's up guys, we're back. Today we have our push beat session and today we're actually going to do it at home. Normally this would be the session that we would do at FLF but Meg is competing today and I am fending for myself and because I'm fending for myself I'm cut on time. So that means that we'll have to train at home base which is never a bad thing. So today's structure will be slightly different. I do have the new prime press that I will use today uh, as a flat press so it is pretty much the same exercise but you will get to see a couple of different movements. So it's gonna be a new session and we have my client over from Cyprus, Andrew, who is a two on two pro, currently in prep for the big man weekend in Portugal. He is currently coming down into his prep and he's looking absolutely on point. So we're exactly where we need to be at around 12 weeks out uh, in terms of condition. So we'll get to see a bit of a sneak peek on what he's looking like and how he's doing. Now, today's session is probably gonna be the last session before my deload. So I am probably gonna go all out. I haven't had extra caffeine because my sleep has been dreadful. And I will talk a little bit more about deloads and what potentially might lead to you needing a deload in a little bit in a separate video that you're gonna watch soon. But let's get stuck in the session. We've got my sustain and performance fuel. Uh, 30 grams of performance fuel and 20 grams of sustain in here. And we do have my MPS Max that we'll have mid-session. So I'll start sipping this now. I've got the session written out and Today I'm going to have to make an exception. Normally, I never ever take my phone on the gym floor and keep it open, but when clients are competing, and Meg is competing today, I will have to take on the gym floor, and I will have to keep it open just to see if there's any updates or see if she needs anything as well. So, there is exceptions to the rule when it comes to phones, and that is when clients are competing. So, we've got to make sure we make uh, slight, slight changes to the rules sometimes. Right guys, let's get stuck in. Before we get going as well, make sure you like, and subscribe. A lot of you guys are watching, without like subscribing, please subscribe, support the channel, show some love. Let's get it. No, my training is my mobility. Core work is spinal mobility. Pullovers is mobility. So I don't actually do mobility work. I actually do exercises that cover my mobility, which makes a massive difference to not only priming yourself for actual work, but keeping yourself in check. Lateral work and you experience any pain or discomfort working bilaterally so both arms at a time try working unilaterally not only will you be able to line yourself up better with any machine that you're using but it also allows you to focus on truly isolating your delt working one arm at one arm at a time always lend itself to a much better precision and i do feel like most people can actually get more out of unilateral work when it comes to side delts and when it comes to delt training in general Mm. 
Let's go, bro. Three tips to get huge cannonball delts. Tip number one, work in full range of motion. Tip number two, control your end ranges. Spend some time at the top when your delt is fully shortened, fully contracted. Control the weight down. Spend some time in the stretch. Tip number three, use different lateral raise variations as well as pressing. Just pressing alone will not give you big round fall delts. You need lateral raises and a bonus point, you also need rear delts. So rear delt work is also extremely important. My three tips to build huge cannonball delts. Let's get it. Fucking hell. Part earlier I was explaining regarding unilateral work. If you look at Mark here, you look at Andrew, they can get in a much better position using the machines working one arm at a time. Simply allowing to get more from the machines and actually get less pain over time. Especially bigger guys and even smaller guys. Some machines just don't actually align well with most people, they're not that well built. So you may just need to work one arm at a time to save your joints and get more productive work. I always like to call up with blood in my pecs. Main reason, just feels a lot better for me. Again, I'm, a power, I'm not a power lifter. My goal is creating as much tension in the muscle, not just moving the load from A to B. I'll do it. Beautiful. Let's get it. Let's have a look, guys. It's a good job I've got gas here because. I actually needed to check myself out and see how that looks. Another reason why filming can be quite beneficial allows you to film your sets and see what your setup's like. It's not just about your execution, it's not just about your effort. Your exercise setup is the most important thing because if your exercise setup isn't right, there's no possible way for the execution to be correct. If your execution is correct, no possible way to actually bring the intensity that you need with productive range of motion and productive stillness in place. So, Make sure you pay attention to the excess setup. Excess setup, in my opinion, is one of the most important things alongside of your intensity. Right that one down. That feels great, to be honest. Credit to guys for letting me watch that setback. Tips for all your pressing movements, whether you're in a Smith machine or any machine press. When you get your position alignment, make sure that your joint stays stacked. So what I mean by that is, if you're watching this video right now, my fist is directly stacked over my elbow at all times. That will allow me to actually generate the most output and keep not only my joint integrity intact, but it will allow me to perform to the best of my ability. So, pressing rules, keep your joints stacked. Fist stays directly over the elbow if you want to get the most out of your pressing. Stay safe and make the most progress. Right that down.
Oh, catches up that. So guys, let's go posture pressing. Chest stays up and in front of the shoulders, always. Whether you're doing shoulder press or chest press, principle remain the same. We lift up slightly for the thoracic, but pelvis remains tucked in. If this stays tucked in, contracting the glutes slightly always helps. You create much more pressure between your diaphragm and your pelvis, creating much more stability here, so you can press a lot harder and keep it all on the pecs and shoulders, rather than connective tissue around it. Right down. Let's go. Posture, chest out up and then press. Come on, strong. And drive. Good. Come on. Take one more, come on. Drive. Oh, perfect, see that? His posture really played him a favour here because he actually had the power to press all the way through. Beforehand, he used to fail on reps like this because his posture wasn't there. So posture plays a massive role in creating more stability, more stability have, more strength, more output better gains. Push yourself in hard, come on. Use that backpack, come on, push yourself in. Push yourself into the pad, come on. Strong, come on, come on, good. Push yourself in hard. Good, come on. Push yourself in. Good. Come on, push yourself in hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drive, 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 all the way. All the way, beautiful rep, beautiful rep. That's the rep, that's the rep, excellent. Good, well done. Still got a really bad habit of just going like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another thing is as well, to point, when you go like this, and you go into any press, you create a different angle. For example, if you arch, if you arch too much on an incline press, you then turn it into a flat press. Because the angle of the bench doesn't matter. What matters is your sternum angle, whether you are doing incline, decline, or flat. So, when you get into presses, you have to make sure you keep your posture, otherwise, if you excessively arch, it might actually create a flat angle on incline press. So guys, make sure that you are not excessively arching your back. You only need slight extension of the thoracic. Excessive arch can actually prevent you from actually hitting your incline the way you need to and create a flat press. So nail your posture, nail your setup, and don't excessively arch. <laughs> I'm gonna need to take three days off after here. Last fucking three nights, mate, sleep's just been dead. I'm waking up like that every two minutes. I'm all right in gym, it's just my sleep's fucked. 
next exercise, either a dip or a narrow grip press. It's been a while since we've been... Or we could even do an eye press. Narrow grip. feels really good. It's impossible to complete that isolated tricep on this movement, so don't try and do that. But you can bias more towards your tricep by the way you position yourself and keeping your arm path tucked and pressing predominantly to the tricep. So that's the goal here. It will still work a little bit of pec and delt, but that's not the point. It's still predominantly a tricep press. Now, have the ability to use Nitram, proceed use chest press. We can manipulate the loading and have resistance more in favour of the stretch. So that's exactly what I want to do here. Okay. Oh. Um. Feels great. What's that? No. Serving done. 25 grams of PS Max down the hatch. Essentials. Let's go. Body tricep extension. Keep 
your upper arm tucked in by your lats. Use a cuff so you can actually grip and hold the cuff inside it. Then I want you to think about pressing your fist down and back. Pause once you fully extend through your arm. Spend a little bit of time there, then come into the stretch. As you are coming to the stretch, keep your elbow in a fixed position and allow your forearm to jam into your bicep. You really want to make sure that you get the full range of motion, spend a little bit of time in the stretch, then extend down and back. Keep your posture, stay in a fixed position, core braced, and make sure you work in rep range between 10 to 15 reps. Right down. Leads for the push session, we've got the line cable lateral. I do have two different variations of these cables. I have a line cable wire raise and a line cable lateral. The reason why I'm doing this lying on the floor, just ease of setup. I think dragging a bench over for one, it's effort, effort that I put to my sets. Secondly, you're never going to be able to get your bench in a perfect spot every time. However, you can put yourself in a perfect spot, aligning your knees in line with the red handles every single time. So, my preference is doing them lying on the floor and the clothes can always get washed plus we've got cleaners so happy days so guys if you're doing a lateral raise try a lying down variation it's definitely very very good to finish and then we're going to pose with Andrew. Monster of a session but very much enjoyable and still not really gassing out. Now this is my last session with my deload and my diet break. Generally in prep your goal is to manage fatigue when you get to a certain point. So when it comes to taking a deload and you will need to take deloads if you want to stay fresh and bring quality packages to the stage, your goal and aim during that week is not fat loss because fat loss and trying to drop fatigue are both opposite end of spectrum goals. Trying to get fresh and be less tired, 
you cannot spend time in a calorie deficit. So diet breaks and deloads, in my opinion, in my opinion, are essential in your prep. That's better. Same to your leg more. That's better. Bring that shoulder down more. Yes. Way fucking better. Do side trust with the same leg as you do side chest. Way better. Yeah, way better. Way better. Yeah. yeah. Don't even, don't, do not do other one. Do this, yes, but the other one, don't. It just makes you look smaller. Yes. Nice, chest up more. Chest up more. That's better. That's it. Chest up more. Right, hold. Yeah, beautiful. Nice. Levels above beyond where it was, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Lean forward a bit more. Yes. Midsection, shh, low out. Tight, hold. Beautiful. Bang on track where we need to be, man. Fullness is nice, man. Really? Yeah. I feel flat as a pancake. You're not. You're not. It's just in your head, mate. You don't feel flat. You're probably thinking you're flat because you've dropped a bit of weight, but you just look leaner. You've still got a lot of pop in you, so you're definitely not flat. You're exactly where you need to be. The conditions, bang on. Right, guys, that is the session wrapped up. Very decent session, all things considering, and I am definitely smashed. My sleep has been extremely poor the past two, three nights. Four nights, actually. Uh, I'm okay when I get in the gym, but I can definitely feel some signs of me needing to pull back. So I'm gonna do before I completely wreck myself. And more on how to deload in the video that has gone live. So give it a watch and you'll know exactly how we can deload yourself. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Take care. Peace out for now.